What's up everybody? Today I'm here with the most recognized scooter on the planet, the Vespa. Also in attendance is Fred. Fred hates me and he's probably gonna eat me before I finish this. Now most people use their Vespa for simple errands, commuting, things like that, but I've made this my primary mode of transportation for highway use, getting back and forth to work. And I can tell you it is a blast to twist the throttle on the 300cc motor. Today we're gonna go over the HPE engine, the large frame chassis, and tell you why you should have one in your garage ASAP. Now before Fred eats me, let's go into the history of Vespa. In 1946, Piaggio Group had a patent made for it, loosely based on their aviation knowledge. It gained popularity quickly. It was even used in Roman Holiday with Audrey Hepburn. It started a subculture in Britain and is still a beloved scooter by today's standard. Separating the Vespa chassis from the rest is the use of a monocoque steel frame. Front to back is metal and is seam welded in two different places. In the early times, the Vespa side covers actually popped off. You had an engine on the right hand side and a spare tire and battery on the left. Nowadays, the motor is centralized and cell phones have replaced roadside repairs. We're finally seeing an updated engine with the 2020 Vespa sporting the new high performance engine, abbreviated down to HPE. These are making three horsepower more, which doesn't seem like a lot until you realize that's a 13% increase in power from previous years. Huge gains for a small CC single cylinder four stroke motor to make. The engine remained water cooled and the radiators are still located in the front shield. Also updated for 2020 was a new belt and roller setup in the CVT transmission. This resulted in a smoother acceleration. The scooter is now quicker without the abrupt off on feeling that you had on non HP models. While not rip your arms off fast, me and Fred both agree, 19 foot pounds of torque will get you off the line quicker than most vehicles. Keeping the screaming scooter rubber side down is a set of brakes, tires, and electronics. The tires on large frame Vespa say 12 inches, with the front tire being 120 and the rear 130. Brake discs are 220 and feature an encoder ring as well for ABS and traction control. If your back wheel is indicated spinning faster than your front, traction control will kick in. Want to remove the nannies and have some fun? Fred says hold the ASR button down and it'll turn traction control off. Be prepared to slide around and have some fun. For 2020, the Vespa suspension did not change with its single front fork leg and hidden twin rear shocks. The suspension travel is gracious for its size, however, it strongly avoid hitting geese or crater sized potholes as it can be a bit jarring for both the scooter and the scooterist. The GTS 300 features two lockable storage units, one in the front where you can charge your phone via the USB and one underneath the seat where you can store a stash of groceries. Removing the pet carrier will actually show you where the HPE engine is installed. Fred also requests me to tell you this is not a pet carrier. Now that we've covered our bases on the new 2020 GTS 300 HPE, let's throw a leg over, a leg through, and go for a ride. The Vespa feels most at home in the city as it was designed to run the gauntlet of narrow and sometimes brick Italian roadways. Its short wheelbase combined with 12 inch wheels makes the chassis more flickable, allowing you to avoid potholes or road debris with ease. The continuously variable transmission allows you to simply twist the throttle without having to shift gears and keeps you in the power band or at least get you back into it in a hurry. The front and rear handbrakes are smooth, but locking either one up will activate the ABS system, which will safely stutter you to a stop. Venturing into the fast life by hopping on the highway exposes just how powerful the new HPE engine is. The scooter quickly gets to 70 miles an hour before reaching the factory limiter at 82. Although the wheel size is only 12 inch, the high speeds actually help the chassis feel less twitchy, 
than on normal roadways. The seating position is far from sport bike oriented, but the upright body position allows you to still lean into corners. The small tires make the bike more agile, but unfortunately sacrifice lean angle, as does the low hanging frame, exhaust, and center stand. Nothing could be more tiring though than powering through sweeping corners on a scenic back road riding a Vespa. As mentioned earlier, the high performance engine received a huge percentage increase in power and now has 24 horsepower and 19 foot pounds of torque. While top speed is still limited, unlocked I can see the scooter hitting 90 miles an hour with no problem. The combination of 12 inch wheels, short wheelbase, and centralized motor make the GTS 300 a very flickable chassis. It can avoid road debris just as quickly as handling a tight corner. The 300cc motor barely sips from its two gallon fuel jug as Vespa claims it to get 73 miles per gallon. And while that might be true for the modest rider, my quick acceleration highway runs brought that number down to about 65 miles per gallon, although it will always have more smiles per mile than any commuter car. For 2020, the GTS 300 received a new LED headlight and tail light. The comparison between an older halogen versus LED is vastly different and increases safety. Aside from not fitting a full face helmet under the seat, the GTS 300 has always had ample storage space for the bike's intended use. Stack groceries or gear, the 16 plus liter storage under the seat can handle it. The front compartment, which is a great storage for phone or wallet, now has a USB charger included, something that was an accessory item only just a few years ago. A tool bag is conveniently located in the front storage and is easy to remove. Putting it back in though, not so much. It's hard to come up with complaints on a model that is accumulation of 73 years in the making. However, the problems do exist. The scooter's borderline motorcycle weight, weighing in at 365 pounds with one gallon of fuel. It can be quite intimidating to new riders. The seat height is not only tall for the height deprived or vertically challenged, but it is also wide. This makes cutting down the seat not an efficient option as the width will still push your legs outwards, decreasing your reach. There is a running joke in the Vespa community. The first step to putting gas in your Vespa after lifting the seat up is to remove the underseat bucket. This is because the Vespa fuel filler tends to overflow like a geyser of gasoline, covering your contents in fossil fuel, reeking for days. Overall, I would not hesitate on purchasing a Vespa 300. The new GTS 300 HPE is perfect for those who want a new design, more efficient motor, and let's be real, more power. The scooter is as versatile as it can get for an on-road rider as it can handle busy streets, highway commuting, and twisty roads, all while exhibiting classic Italian styling. The only suggestion I can make is avoid Fred. Fred hates everybody. Thanks for watching everyone, and remember, ride fast, take chances, and click subscribe. Now, most people have made Vespa into their... Really, bro? Really? Like right then? <laughs> I've actually made this my highway motor transportation for the last six months, and I can tell you it is a blast to twist the throttle. Really, Fred? Really, Fred? Fred, you suck. 
It was actually used in the movie Roman Holiday with Audrey Hepburn. Fred, what the hell, dude? Now, before Fred eats me, let's go into the history of Vespa. Vespa was founded in 19... What are y'all fighting about? Fred, tell your homies to chill. Still beloved scooter by today's standards. Fred is pissed. Fred does not like me and I'm scared he's gonna steal my keys.